welcome to our one. It's very cold. Let's go inside. And it's in Lincoln, Rhode Island. <laughs> welcome. Go inside. So this is the entrance of uh, R1. What we did is, when we started this, we built a whole deck in this basically warehouse. So it's a huge, like 15,000 square foot deck. So if we walk up, we got some art here. A welcoming art from an artist from France, which has a black light reflection on it. And here you come into the very good looking, beautiful space where you have food sit and you can overlook the track. Look down to time mission. So if you look what we did, we, we, this was completely new built, but it looks like it's old, like a little bit New England. If you look there at all the bricks, the bricks are Basically, it's not like the building from bricks. We just put it on. It's, uh, we shipped it all the way from the Netherlands to here. The same with the lights. I am originally from Eindhoven and uh, Philips is a company which was founded in Eindhoven. And these are old lights from the 50s from a factory in uh, the Netherlands. So the same with the floor. This is all little pieces of wood. We, it's actually new uh, pieces of wood. We put them down and then we just sand them and make them look old. So the purpose is that it looks old. So uh, in this area was this always like this? No, no, this was, we, we first, we had a, first we had a bar under that rain of lights. We decorated it and uh, it was uh, designed by a Dutch uh, uh, sort of artist, architect guy. And first we had a whole bar and then later after COVID we took out the bar and now it's more like a seating area with the kitchen uh, on the back. And it works better for us because we have two liquor bars, one in Dart City and one in the X bar. So this, we have more space to put the people through here on the, on the check-in desks. So it's just a more convenient setup what we have. We basically took out the bar because it's a go-kart, it's a, it's a really a go-kart track and people like to have convenient food and quick because we are doing sometimes a thousand people a day and a lot of people want to just eat quick and sometimes it's so busy that you, you don't really have, you don't need a bar to sit around and people to stay because there is a lot of turnover in the people. The food is done by a third party which calls the burrito bowl and they are, uh, they are specialized in the food. So we do everything here basically ourselves except the food. Now we are going downstairs to the X bar. This is the X bar, which is a very special part in uh, R1. And it's doing incredibly well. It's always very, very busy in here. Every weekend it's almost sold out and it's a long waiting time. But we put a lot of love and energy in this. Just, you see already the art on the, on the wall, the sign, even this, the plaster. It's, there, was, there was a lot of thought and a lot of artistic ideas put into this X bar. And normally if you go to any X bar in the world, they normally have just planks where they throw. We actually take trees. If you come, you can have a look here. So this is just a, a lock of tree and then we just painted it and we throw it onto this. We have to change them almost every week. We, we use them for a little bit, then we turn them around. So we basically use them two times and then they, uh, then they get taken off and uh, we, we replace them. A nice story about, uh, about the trees. Those are pine trees. We buy them from uh, Revive the Roots and they are, um, they are in touch with people where they had to cut the trees. So it's not that we go in the woods, we cut the trees and we, we drag them in here. 
So we work with them together. That's why we pay also extra money. And they, they, they source those trees, they get goals. And then if we, we need a certain size, so we need a big tree. And if they had to be cut down, they are in contact. They cut the trees and they are brought here. So it's a nice, it's a little bit a nice backstory uh, about uh, what we are using. We have, you, you can see, we have 10 lanes, but every time um, customers come and they come minimum with, with two people, they get two lanes. So we, we change the time. It's not that if you come with four, you still have two lanes. So, but then instead of in half an hour you throw, you throw 45 minutes, or if you are with six people, you throw one hour, but you always have one booth, and one booth is basically two lanes. I can, I can try to throw an axe now, but I tried a small one. Look, ah, it's not that bad <laughs> for the first time. The bullseye. The bullseye, almost bullseye, almost bullseye. As I was telling, there is a lot of art in here. If you look at that wall, you see all kind of art pieces. We buy every few months, we buy a piece of art, we change it out. So just to basically support a little bit this whole community in Rhode Island, because in Rhode Island there are a lot of artists. So we just buy, hang it, replace it. It's a little bit the same with the, if you look at the bar. Of course there is liquor. And uh, we had to convince this, the, the town that drinking and throwing axes is a good thing. And uh, the funny thing is that I have to knock on this wood. Never ever anything happened here. So it's because you always, it's not that you come in here and you can just throw axes. We always have like a person, like an axe coach who teaches you how to throw the axes. So that's why it's still a good combination if you have alcohol and throwing axes. So let's go from the axe bar into the go-kart track. Here, you can see already, this is the, as we say, the pit lane, where people, uh, they, they wait behind the gate. And then when it's their turn, they have, a, they have a carding number, which will appear on that big screen. You have your name, your card number, you go sit in. They give you some uh, last moment uh, instructions. For example, to not forget to put your seat belt on. You have your steering wheel. Um, what we have on this card, we also we have a reverse on the card and we even have a power boost on the card. So people can use a power boost for like three seconds. Every 20 seconds they drive on the track. So it gives you an extra uh, push if you want to pass somebody or if you want to use it to have a quicker lap time. And if you turn around you see that um, we have a multi-level track that means it goes up and down and we just built this in in um, like end of November beginning of December and uh, we built the whole structure in 10 days and it was a 90 ton uh, steel which we which we put in and we can now if you turn around again you see we have now 38 cards and we drive with 18 cards at the same time in a race or maximum 18 go-karts can drive at the same time and before we only could do 14 we could even do 20 but we need to buy more go-karts to drive with 20 but the track is so much bigger now that we can just add more people it's also good for the customer especially on a saturday the waiting times are less we had a few hours waiting time and now we can reduce that because we can do more people an hour and if you can see what is really cool you have now so many different levels you have it you go up here then you have this this uh this two two turns and you go back down which is a quite steep way uh, getting down what is really nice is if you come here if you see over there you really are now very close to the restaurant and you walk in here this is dart city so people who are throwing darts you see here you're you're driving here in this height and you basically see the people throwing the darts so it's a it's very interactive 
all together. We even have a, like, uh, if people know anything about racing, you know the Daytona or the Indianapolis, which has the big curve. We also made one over here. So this is about uh, seven, eight degrees. Yeah, it's quite high off the ground and it gives you a very nice sensation because it pushed the go-kart down so you can make the corner very quick. So actually this is funny to see, this is a very sharp turn and you see if you look very good, you see all the, well I can put my name in here, <laughs> you see all the, uh, all the rubber which we have to clean almost every day. And this is, a, um, this is actually wood with a very special coating, so it, it gives grip. But if you look there, if you go down, you, um, you come from wood into asphalt. But the funny thing is that it has the same grip. And then here you have the, the green line. And this we put for the people. If they come for the first time, you know exactly where you should be driving. It's very difficult still for the people, but if you follow the green line, it's basically the quickest line to follow to make the best lap time. And here you see very well the transition from wood, this is actually iron, into asphalt. But it's a very smooth transition, so you don't even feel it if you drive. So you come down and then you, you go under the bridge, you have an opening and you go under again, and then you come into this quite fast corner. But what we did, we made a very nice mural over there with its from the same artist where you saw when you came in. It's all a black light cityscape and we put our own advertisements on there for her Dart City, Refuel, R1. And we also put, for the Rhode Island, we also put the Superman building in there. And it took him about like a month to paint this. But I think it's a very, very cool, uh, cool piece of art that we made. And it, I think it's one of the biggest black light paintings for sure in Rhode Island. So what is nice to know is that we started here in 2017 and uh, we just kept on building. You see it, we started with R1 and then we, we made the X bar as you just saw. And then we, made time mission we will explain it later to you and time mission is actually behind that wall because before we had a we had two go-kart tracks we had a little uh, kids track and a medium go-kart track so what we did we took the kids track out we made one big go-kart track then since two months we make it even bigger by building in the whole multi-level and we also, what you also saw upstairs, we also put a Dart City. So we started from basically just a go-kart track. We made an X-Bar, we made Time Mission, we made Dart City, and we made an arcade. So, and now we run out of space. We have, we, we, we have to raise the roof to, to make something else. But uh, I think we have a lot for a lot of customers. Here we can walk direction uh, Dart City and if you look downstairs everything has windows so left and right so you can you can on the right side you can see the track and here on the left side you can look on the arcade which is always nice if parents they they sit here they eat something and then they can look at their children playing the arcade or driving the track on the other side like I said we have so much art so much things everywhere. This is, a, this is a bit of an ego wall. <laughs> I'm from a racing family. So uh, this is a picture of my father. He won the 24 hours Daytona overall in 1978. This is uh, me with uh, think we, we drive a lot of GT. This is even my mother is on there. My, it's uh, like uh, we are, I'm coming from a racing family. I drove for like 15 years. My father drove for like 10, 12 years. Even my grandfather used to drive the 24 hours Le Mans in 1954 with a Porsche Spider. So it's a, it's a long, long family tradition. That's why we also end up in the go-karting. My grandfather even at end of the 
50s he had a go-kart track. So even if you look now on the wall, you see here a picture, actually the number 34, that's my father. This is how the go-karts used to look in the, in the, in the 60s. After our ego wall, <laughs> we can, we move. We have a, now you come into Dart City, which is a, again, a different theme. Again, a lot of art in here. It's more a cyberpunk theme, where here you have a check-in desk. You see here uh, all the cyberpunk. If you even go look uh, above you, there is like a whole cityscape. And again, it's a, basically it's the same setup as the X-Bar. You again have 10 lanes and everybody who comes can take a lane. It's not necessary here to throw like with the axis two at the same time. You could do it, but everything has its own games. We have different games to play. What is really a nice detail here is the glass. This glass is, uh, it looks like a flight. If you, if you would film it from here, then you see this is like a, like a, like a flight from the way you throw it. So this is what I was telling before. You're throwing the dart here and you can see the people driving. So normally the people come, they rent a lane, take a flight. I can do this very quickly. Put the name in. I can put my name, Mike. I can make a picture or you can make a picture. <laughs> so you're basically throwing the dart. There I put my, I put my name on there. You throw the, you throw the darts. 13, great number, <laughs> three, and it counts automatically. So I had 35 points, and then this is a game where you have to go from basically all the way up to 180, and if you hit exactly 180, you win the game. And then you see again, a lot of arts on the, on the wall. And then of course, when you are playing the game, you can order drinks at the bar, or if you don't want to play and you just want to sit at the bar. We have a very, uh, very nice cocktail menu. We have great servers who can make you a, a very nice cocktail. If you see, we all, it's a high speed club, Apex, qualifying lab. We all make our own cocktails, which have something to do with this entertainment center or with the track. So we use, uh, all the glass, very nice cocktail glasses. So it's, uh, it's, you can have a great time here. So now we go from Dart City, we're walking through the arcade, and then we go to Time Mission. Here you have the arcade, which is very known to a lot of people, of course. You have your little shop here on the side. And then through these doors, we come in uh, to Time Mission, sort of time travel. But uh, here we have the man himself. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, I can talk about the time mission, but it's better to talk about the creator of time mission. So I hand it over to Mr. Peter Martin. Not the creator, co-creator. <laughs> co-creator, okay. I'm Peter. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Time Mission. And uh, Mike gave you a tour of the building. Basically, I moved here in 2018 from Belgium. And together with Mike, uh, we built first the X Bar, like Mike said, then the arcade time mission and, and Dart City. I will take you, come follow me, follow me. I'll, I'll take you through uh, time mission. And this is our very first time mission location. This is what we call our proof of concept location. This is where we validated if time mission would actually work. And we sell about 45,000 tickets here. So it does work. And as you can see, it's a long, 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 long corridor. And every door has a little mini game. Oh, I need a key band. <laughs> Let's get a key band. So Erica is making a test team for me. That's how well prepared we are. So um, this, is, um, this key band is not active, but basically every player gets an RFID tag to unlock the doors. Thank you. Erica is the star. She's the star of Time Mission. She's here, been here since the start, no? It's almost three years, so Time Mission. So Time Mission at R1 has been open almost for three years. It opened on 
February 26th of 2021, so almost three years. Behind every door, there is a different activity. And in our new locations, we have a touch screen at the wall, right here. It's more simplistic, but it still shows you the year you're traveling to. So this room, you're traveling back to 400 million years ago, and it shows you how much brain power, strength, coordination, and speed you need. And it gives you a little hint of what you will find inside. And every room, I'll just open a few rooms, has a different, like, mini game. So this is the server heist. This one, you're running around and you're like you're pressing buttons. And then this one, you go in and you, sh you can see it's like a koi pond. So people love this, you know, very simple game games. No, not too much brain. And then you see there, this game, it shows you, oh, I have to shuffle. Oh, I missed, see. And then every time I score a point above the door, it shows you your score. And the goal is to get 100 points per portal. But as you can see, we try to do fun games within an immersive decor. Let's go. This one, we enter into a dystopian forest. I'm not going to give it away, but there is a secret hidden tunnel in this one. And who doesn't like to be Indiana Jones? Look at this. And I don't know um, if you can hear it, but there is like bird noises and animal jungle noises in the back. And this room, you can see, it's a floor is lava room. So I have to try to stay up and I have to press these buttons, right? There is a button here. And when I, but well, when I fall, we lose. And then the screen says, you lose. Please try again. And the good thing about time mission is, as long as there's nobody waiting in front of the door, we can just go and play the same game again, right? So we can try to improve our score. Let me try. So we have to wait for the countdown. Three, two, one, scan. And now I can go around and I can try to press all these buttons as quickly as possible. Now here. No, oh, can oh, no, I have to go back. I have to go back. There is a button here. And there is one here. And now I have to go back all the way till the end to win 45 points. Rock and roll. So every room is a different, some games. This was a quite active room. I'm almost out of breath. This is more like a psychedelic LSD palace. So, some people, they like to play music. So this is a, a giant uh, piano. So as you can see, Time Machine at R1 has 25 portals. And today it's a Tuesday, it's like noon. So of course there's no people. But in the weekends, we get about 60, 70 people playing at the same time. There's another one. Here we walk into Aladdin and Jasmine's world. 100 diamonds slide up and people have to quickly compute this and press the right button. Then in here, this is really nice where you have to throw. So we try to make very physical games, right? So here there is 100 stars and I have to try to, to hit them as quick as possible. Of course, normally people play in teams of two to five people, right? Let's do one more room. So this is really a good time mission example where it's a simple game, basketball, but instead of just having horizontal hoops, the Mayans, they used to play basketball 
on vertical hoops with skulls. So the people played basketball for the gods. That's it. This was a quick walkthrough of Time Mission at R1 Indoor Garden. Thank you.